Breaking news this afternoon. The situation at Colorado hospitals continues to worsen. Our hospital system is now under Tier 3, the highest tier of Colorado's patient management system. That means decisions to move patients will be made at the statewide level. Last week, Governor Polis signed an executive order that allows patients to be transferred to other medical centers without their consent while in Tier 3. The Colorado Hospital Association calls the move to Tier 3 an extraordinary step that should send a clear message to Coloradans. Our health care system is in jeopardy of being overwhelmed. We do see certain regions where our hospitals and our systems are incredibly full. Right now, really along the front range and even in the metro Denver area, those larger hospitals are very, very full. And so what we're needing to do is, is find a way to move some of those patients out to other parts of Colorado, maybe out to some of our rural hospitals, out to the mountain communities where we do have some bed availability, which will free up uh, some space within those larger hospitals. This afternoon, we're going in depth on the data and what's being done to address the growing number of beds in use. Our partners over at the Denver Post say Colorado now has the fifth highest rate of infection in the country. And Governor Jared Polis is looking to Washington for help. We have reached out to uh, our federal partners to see whether there are any additional uh, federal teams that can come in and support our efforts here. Uh, and that formal request went in this morning and we'll be working with our federal partners to get resources on the ground to provide additional uh, scale in that work. Digging deeper into the latest data from the state, 92% of Colorado's ICU beds are currently in use, and more than a third of the state's health care facilities say they're expecting staff shortages within the next week. Taking a closer look at the role of vaccinations, Governor Polis says we recently surpassed 80% of eligible Coloradans who have received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. However, he says the remaining 20% are to blame for our state's worsening hospital situation. I, you know, have no qualm if they have a death wish, but they're clogging our hospitals. And I think most Coloradans are sick and tired of wearing masks to protect people who don't seem to want to protect themselves. Governor Polis says we shouldn't be surprised if there are delays in treatment or care, even for conditions not related to COVID. Chloe Nordquist has a closer look at the situation playing out at Swedish Medical Center. We have seen a lot of patients come in sicker than they ever have before. Emergency physician Dr. Donald Stater isn't talking about COVID patients. And the reason is that so many of them are fearful of coming to a place where COVID patients are, that they are delaying care for other life-threatening conditions. So we've seen a lot of people come in after having their stroke instead of while they're having a stroke that we can intervene on. That anxiety of coming to a place with lots of COVID has kept a lot of people away inappropriately and to the detriment of their health. While emergency departments have been battling waves of COVID-19, patients have been foregoing emergency care for conditions and illnesses they may have otherwise gone in for. Now that backlog is catching up to emergency centers across the U.S., including here at Swedish Medical Center. During COVID, we had this tremendous decrease in our volume initially. And since that time, what you've seen is a tremendous increase in, in volumes back to, I'd say, baseline numbers. The number of patients may be returning to normal, but hospital conditions have not. There are fewer nurses and other hospital staff, and the coronavirus is lingering, affecting thousands of Americans every week. It's the busiest that it's been in emergency medicine and emergency departments in over a decade. Dr. Richard Zane practices in emergency medicine. We're seeing what I believe to be almost two years of neglected health care. So we're seeing lots of car accidents, lots and lots of strokes, heart attacks, cancer, skin infections, the routine things that we see in emergency departments, except we're seeing much more of them, more patients, and we're seeing it with an increased severity. He says the backlog of regular care has caused this rush of sicker patients. And we're finding more advanced stages of everything. And every condition, when it manifests in an emergency condition, uh, gets more severe when that underlying condition is more severe. Another factor, life is slowly returning to normal. People are out and more prone to accidents. The more the people are out and about, the more their chances are of having a medical emergency. 
Akeen Demahin is with the American Hospital Association. They represent thousands of health facilities from small regional hospitals to big medical centers. He says those who might be afraid to seek medical help shouldn't be. Patients that um, need to come to the emergency department should feel confident in doing so. Don't delay seeking care because you're scared of COVID. We have protocols in the hospitals to keep people safe. As emergency physicians balance COVID patients and other increasingly severe emergencies, Dr. Seder says continuing regular checkups and seeking help when needed is important. Go do it, please do, because that's how we find and intervene on medical issues before they become emergencies. I'm Chloe Nordquist reporting.